everyone's got their different kick in life. This is my kick. You know, I love doing this because I know, I know if I put my time in, I work hard, it's going to repay me in some way. We are in Cedarburg High School with Kansas State, newest Kansas State Wildcat, Logan Landers, 2021 commit, power forward, center, big man, can shoot the basketball, handle it a little bit. A lot of things in Logan Landers. So first, you know, Logan, we're in your home right now, you know, for the past couple of years playing basketball. So, so how you doing, man? Doing good. I'm excited for you guys to be here. Excited to talk to you guys. Let everyone know at Kansas State what I'm about and how I'm very excited to get to campus. So first, let's talk about, you know, what, what it was like to, you know, grow up in this, well, I guess, you know, the last two years yeah. in here. And I mean, just talk about your, you, you know, your time in Wisconsin playing basketball growing up and stuff like that. So when I was younger, um, it was dual between baseball and basketball. Um, you know, I bounced around from that for the longest time, doing as many sports as I could. And then when, towards middle school, um, I was really focusing on baseball. And then freshman, sophomore, and a little freshman, sophomore year, and kind of some of junior year, I was heavy on baseball. Um, I was getting some D1 looks for baseball. And then, you know, I had a change of heart and I started playing basketball competitively and in a very prestigious program in Phenom University halfway through my junior year. Um, and, you know, it all took off from there. I mean, Coach Antonio Curro is the head guy at Phenom. You know, he got my name out there and was able to get college scouts and coaches to see me. Um, it was, you know, a lot of fun playing for him and playing for that organization. And, um, you know, it landed me at K-State, so mm -hmm. couldn't be happier with it. So yeah, let's talk about K-State. When they got involved, when did they get involved? Who's the guy that, you know, you first talked to from there? And what got everything started with Kansas State? Well, K-State came in about halfway through my recruiting process. Um, so I kind of had a little bit of a grasp on what was going on, what to look for, and kind of what was, you know, the main thing that I want to see in a program. And, uh, you know, Coach Lowry reached out to me first. He's the one that I talked to and started to build a real good relationship with. And then Coach Weber and I started talking, you know, I'd say about a week or two, or if that even, maybe a week after I talked to Coach Lowry. And, you know, we talk all the time. Coach Lowry was heavy on the letters he'd send to me. Um, you know, how they believe in me and, you know, everything from A to Z. So it was, you know, a lot of fun talking to them. Um, you know, when I found, when I looked into K-State's program and I looked into the campus and everything, you know, it's my lifestyle. That's, that's a lifestyle I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they had everything that I, ha I wanted and, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> Five, 50 minute drive and I get there at about 5.30. We work out till seven and then after that, I get on to class for virtual hour um, with different class every day. Mm -hmm. Go through the day of the school day, finishes at about one. I get out of class and then I'll be right back in here. I'll be back here uh, with the shooting machine, getting shots up, mm -hmm. or um, that'll be a little bit of time to kind of take a nap or something. And then I go to next level, where is my training facility in Mequon which is about 15 minutes from my house. And I trained there for about an hour and a half with uh, Matt Gifford, one of the best guys I've ever met in my life. Down to earth, very religious. Mm -hmm. You know, he cares to push me in the weight room, but he also cares about my outside life. He's one of the, you know, other than my dad, he's one of the best mentors I could have ever had in my life. Outstanding guy. And then after next level, um, I go and get uh, some type of meal to fuel the body, mm -hmm. and uh, then I have a protein shake. Then after that, I usually am at my middle school at nighttime getting some more shots up and wake up the next day. That, that was one day. Yeah, that was one day. And you woke up, what What time did you wake up? 4.30. 4.30 a.m. 4.30, and then I usually will try to, I usually will get to bed. My goal is always 9 o'clock. <laughs> Doesn't always happen because school comes into play and I got to get make sure A's yeah. you know that's something that I have been trying to get the whole year uh -huh. finished with A's um yeah those are Tuesdays and Thursdays now let's talk about you know the other schools that were involved with you too so uh, who who was you know the teams coming at you the hardest and and ultimately why was K-State you know the better choice well Kansas State 
the schools that came at me the most was probably Kansas State, USC, and Houston. Um, all you know, all the schools I got offers from were amazing schools. Loved them. Um, Kansas State just stuck out to me because of the coaching staff. I mean, I had an insane connection with all of them. I got to talk to them um, earlier in the process than any of the other schools, mm -hmm. um, and I got to meet the whole. Right, sorry, I got to talk to the whole coaching staff yeah. very early in the process. Um, you know, they had a genuine outlook on when they would talk to me, and you know how they would go about. Um, just the whole atmosphere and life at K-State. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I always wanted coaches to be straight up with me, and that's exactly what everyone on the staff did. Um, they were, you know, very loving towards me, and they didn't just want to see me go out there and do everything. They also cared about off the court, academics, how my family life is, mm -hmm. who my friends are, everything, you know, that really hit home for me. So obviously, Coach Lowry was the guy, you know, that really, you know, got things started and, and, the, and the relationship built and stuff like that. But like you said, you got to talk to the, the coaching staff earlier than some. So what was that like to see a guy like Shane Salpa, who had played at K-State, similar to your position as well as like a stretch four? What is it like to see a guy like that on your staff? You know, it shows how much that um, the guys that came before care about the staff and care about the team and care about the organization mm -hmm. to be able to come back and say, yeah, I want to coach for this team. The guys here are real. They're not just in it for wins. They mm -hmm. care about these guys. They want to see them succeed in life as well as on the court. So that was something that I thought was, you know, very intriguing from when I first um, got to meet the staff. And then Coach Weber, I mean, he's obviously going to be your head coach. Like, what, what do you what do you like about him? What is what has stood out about well, Coach Weber, um, I didn't know until like, I'd probably say a couple weeks into talking that he's from this area. He's yeah. from Wisconsin, <laughs> you know, in this, uh, you know, Milwaukee, down, Milwaukee area. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And um, I always, I could tell a little bit because, you know, there's people around here and he kind of had that same type of feel when I talked to him, you know, mm -hmm. Coach Weber is an amazing guy. He's an amazing coach. He cares for the guys extremely, you know, he wants to see them succeed. Um, but he also knows we're kids. We also, he also knows, um, you know, what goes on in a kid's mind and mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, but he holds us, I, from what I've heard from the guys I've talked to, he holds us very accountable. And, you know, I wouldn't want anyone else to be my head coach going into college. It's funny you bring up the Wisconsin thing. So, yeah, he is from Wisconsin. You're from Wisconsin. I mean, yeah, yeah how cool is that? Um, and what do the people like up here? I mean, you talked about how people have a certain type of, you know. You know, they're the, the Midwestern type uh -huh. of people, you know, that's, you know, there's Midwestern, there's, you know, down South, West, you know, everything. Um, you know, he's very genuine, cares about people, and that's how people are here. You know, you, you, you're walking down the street and people will say hi, and you'll say hi, and some people even start a conversation with yeah. you just to see, you know, how you are and stuff. So, I mean. That was something that I kind of laughed about and my dad laughed about too because he was like, yeah, you know, you can tell he's from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. I'm, I'm from Michigan, so I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the conversation is striking up. So oh, let's talk about COVID a little bit. Obviously that, you know, uh, affected your recruitment some. You didn't get to go see schools and I mean, that's why you, you still haven't gotten to see Manhattan yet, but you know, you saw it was a smaller town. You kind of like that vibe, but just take me through all of that and what COVID did to your recruitment. You know, it really, it sucks. It really hurts because, you know, it sucks on one point because I didn't get the full experience. I didn't get the full um, feeling of being recruited by these schools that are, you know, some of the best top schools in the nation. Um, but on another hand, I didn't, I didn't try to take it too harshly because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things going on in the world in the world where I was like I could sit here and whine about this and be frustrated or I could take it with a grain of salt and say this is still an amazing opportunity for me. Mondays and Wednesdays are I'm usually getting up at 5 30 so it's another hour an extra hour of sleep and I'll be here in the morning um, and then sometimes afternoon train same type of spiel and then Fridays um, we have Oh, I wish I could have told you to go. There's uh, in Mequon, there's this college, Concordia, where they, uh, they're right by the Lake Michigan. They mm -hmm. got these set of stairs where you can walk from the college down to the, uh, the lake. There is a great amount of stairs, let's say. And Friday mornings, I'll get up at 
five, I'd say. You know, I wake up at about 4.50 and I get out of there at five. Mm -hmm. And I go do the stairs in those mornings and then come here and shoot and <laughs> go about the day. Go about the day. <laughs> you got, that's the life, man. You know, but everyone's got their different kick in life. This is my kick. You know, I love doing this because I know, I know if I put my time in, I work hard, it's gonna repay me in some way. How hard was it, you know, for you to make that decision to say, I'm gonna drop baseball and focus fully on basketball and take this to the next level? It was, it was a very difficult conversation. My dad and I were going over about a month and a half. We were talking about it. Um, and, you know, I have had a certain love for baseball since I was real little. Um, I was a pitcher, pitcher only, so I was PO, that's you know, mm -hmm. what they call. Um, so, you know, that was my job. That was my one job to pitch, and I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing it. Um, but there was that certain itch for basketball that I had, and I was like, I just can't let this go away. Yeah. And, you know, ever since I made that transition, I haven't looked back. I've enjoyed every second of mm -hmm. waking up super early, going to bed late at night, working at basketball, working on homework, and just trying to pursue my dream. Well, you got the height, you got the skills. So when when did the, those things start to come into play? When did you start to really get really good at shooting the basketball, handling it? And when did the growth spurt happen? Okay, I'll start with the growth spurt. Yeah. The growth spurt, when I came into sixth grade, I don't know, I, what height was I? I'd say I was about, I don't know. I, I can't remember, I can't put it out of my head what height I was, but I grew three inches sixth grade year, three inches seventh grade year, eight inch, or three inches yep. um, uh, eighth grade year. So mm -hmm. nine inches in three years. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of pain, a lot of like <laughs> awkwardness. I'd run like a baby giraffe. I'd just kind of look goofy. So, you know, um, that's when the growth spurt really hit. Yep. And um, so that's nine inches. So I was, I'd say five, nine, five, ten or something in fifth grade. And then I left eighth grade being about six five borderline six six so um that's when it really hit and i was mm -hmm. sorry i got really tall so i that was an advantage for not only basketball but baseball as well but basketball has been something my dad and i you know we always would work on as well as baseball and he always would have me shoot because my dad's six one my mom's about five seven mm -hmm. we have no idea where i got this tall from but you know god blessed me with this height so i'm going to take advantage of it so my dad and i would shoot you know we'd get up about 500 shots every day about from sixth grade to eighth grade he would come with me and we would go to my middle school which is right across the street mm -hmm. in the morning before i'd go to classes um, and we'd shoot in the morning and then freshman, sophomore, junior, and now senior year, mm -hmm. I kind of do that more, the morning workouts and stuff on my own. Um, and, you know, every day I'm getting up five, five to 800 shots, I'd say, um, just consistently working on my craft, consistently trying to better myself to help a winning Kansas mm -hmm. State team. So then, okay, let's talk about Kansas State and what, what they like about you specifically. What did Coach Lowry initially say he liked about you? Well, as I'm sure everyone knows in Manhattan, Kansas, and Kansas in general, Dean Wade yep. is, you know, one heck of a player to come through that organization. And, you know, that's one of the first names we talked about on the first couple phone calls is he's like, go watch Dean, go watch highlights, and mm -hmm. you'll see exactly why we're ecstatic about you. Yep. I was like, okay, you know, I go watch the highlights and I'm like, yeah, this is the guy that I would like to model my game after mm -hmm. um, and try to, you know, push myself to be as good as he was when he came through the organization or even better, hopefully one day. Um, he's doing pretty well now in the pros and yep. the Cavaliers. You know, you see the tweets and everything. He's, he's got a double-double for the yeah, first time. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, he's step-by-step, step, he's gradually going up on the pedestal, which mm -hmm. is awesome. So, you know, they saw a lot of – they saw – they saw, from what Coach Lowry said, the ability for me to kind of do a little bit of everything. Can shoot, can play the post, can pass, can dribble, and play defense. You know, it's a little bit of everything from what I would have been told. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what my game is to a degree. You know, I can do everything um, to a certain yeah. degree pretty well. And I think that's going to help a lot in the long run. So obviously Rivals, you know, has you put at a center, but you know, it seems like, yeah, I know it seems like K-State and what you're, you'd be at the next level is more of like a stretch for, yeah. yeah, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, 
all the all the different recruiting or all the different websites and everything they all say center or whatever because mm-hmm. they see the height they see 610 and they're like oh he's a center and it's like no no i mean stretch yeah. four get out in transition pick roll pick pop shoot mm-hmm. um it's all those type of things it's never i've never been one who's going to hold myself in a little box where I sit down mm-hmm. low and try to just score. I mean, there's a lot more to my game, and there's a lot more that I'm going to work on yep. in the upcoming years. Do you think you could play the five if you needed to um, in certain situations, or do you see? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I certainly, you know, Big 12 is one of, if not the, it's arguably one of the best conferences mm-hmm. in the nation, obviously top conference in the nation. Yep. So, you know, with that, that comes with a certain level of um, playing ability. Mm-hmm. So I think the guys there in the Big 12 are, everyone's extremely talented, but I think I'll be able to go in there and hold my own and play a good five, four, and hopefully three. Yeah. What's an uh, underrated skill of yours that people don't talk about enough? My passing. Yeah. I'm going to be completely honest. You know, I, I love, you know, Kevin Durant is an mm-hmm. awesome guy to watch, obviously, yep. one of the greatest of all time. Kevin Love um, and Larry Bird, old school. You mm-hmm. know, that's, you know, Pete Maravich, those guys, you know, great passing. Um, and that's something that I've always, I don't know how to put it exactly. It's not something that you necessarily are sitting there throwing a ball against yeah. the wall trying to do. It's something more of an instinct. It's a habit. And really, it's, you know, your vision on the court and your ability to get the ball out of your hands fast. Mm-hmm. It's something that a lot of, I feel a lot of people don't always talk about, but it's something that I really pride myself on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll catch something down here. Uh-huh. Turn around. Like, oh, shit, I'm stuck. Being able to toss something up. Go in the lane. Drop a dime to Davion. Uh-huh. It's going to be a lot of fun for our team. You know, and the new coming guys and everything. It's going to be an enjoyable time. So what's your, oh yeah, turn around, splack. Then what do you want to work on um, before you get to Manhattan? Which is, I mean, well, I shouldn't even say before you get to Manhattan because you're going to be there in like a less three than weeks. a month. Yeah, three so weeks. I, the countdown is on. That is really exciting stuff. So we'll get to that in a second more. But yeah, I mean, once you get there, you know, on June 5th, you said is when it's yep. supposed to be. Uh, what do you hope to get right into and uh, improve on before, you know, your freshman season begins? You know, obviously right when I get there, I want to, how shall I say it, establish myself in the program, establish mm-hmm. the relationship with my teammates, the connection, um, and just get to work right away in the weight room with um, Ben, the uh, trainer there that I've talked with, awesome guy, and on the court too, you know, getting the ball down low, being able to be really strong with it, and not have to worry about going up and say, like, you know, if a guy grabs me or whatever, not worrying about getting yanked down being Mm -hmm. able to go through the contact and finishing and really off of you know Nigel Mike Max any of the guards we have on our team uh, Marquise coming down they want to set it they want to pick and roll I want to be able to do whatever these guys Mm -hmm. want off it I want to be able to read any type of defense pick pop hit a shot so they trust me to hit a shot pick pop roll go Mm -hmm. to the hoop or toss up to our big guys other, now, other big yeah, guys, I yeah. should say, because we got some fo- seven footers on the team. Uh-huh. So, you know, it'll be the first time I'm playing and I'm not, you know, over here looking over guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Davion Bradford, you seven footer. I mean, how exciting is it to play with, you know, another big man that's, I mean, he's going to be dominating that paint. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I've, for as long as I can remember, I mean, other than this past AU year, I've always been the biggest guy on the court. Yeah. Um, always the most looked at to a point because I've always been the tallest guy you know to have another guy have multiple other guys out there that are you know seven feet tall and Mm -hmm. say you know if I get the ball on one side I'm sitting there I drive I'm stuck I can toss it up to him he can Mm -hmm. go finish with a dunk you know that's going to be a lot of fun to play with you know there's multiple options to that and I can just see it being very successful and then I mean how ready are you going to be as a freshman coming in I mean how excited I mean sometimes you know you never know what can happen Injuries could get you thrown in there right away, or, you know, you could be having to learn behind a lot of guys, trying to find your way. What do you have to take to all that? You know, I knew this question was going to be asked, and I had (laughs) I got, I thought about it a little bit, because every single, you know, every single guy that goes into a new program, whether it's Division 3 or Division 1, all divisions are very Mm -hmm. talented regardless, but, you know, going into any team that you're going to play with, your thought process should be, I want to go in there, I want to play right away, I want to start, 
and I want to make a very big impact for our team, mm -hmm. not just myself. Yep. I mean, that's the biggest thing I want to be able to do going in. That's my thought, and that's my goal. Do I know what's going to happen? No. You know, God's got a plan for me. He knows what's going to happen. He's going to put me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. If I can go there right away and play right away, awesome. I'm going to do whatever I can to help us win. If I got to learn a little bit, take baby steps to get to the point where I can go in and play, then that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever needs to be to help us win and be successful, that's what I'm ready to do and I'm excited to do. What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite thing to do coming down the court? If I, can get, if I can get some momentum going, get down the court. As you guy. Ah. Put some in the rim. Uh-huh. Oh, stare down to the crowd. <laughs> Something to get, get everyone going, get them out of their seats. How big is God in your life? You know, how much has that affected, you know, everything you've done growing I, up? I've been raised in a Lutheran family. We go to church every Sunday. I have a prayer book I read every day. Mm -hmm. And I try to, I, I don't read it enough, but I try to read the Bible as much. You know, I, my goal is five pages a day. You know, and there's a lot of people out there who would say, whoa, you read, you know, you do that. And then there's a lot of people out there that do 10 times that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my dad, my mom and dad raised me to be a caring, loving person. Um, and that's what I try to pride myself on every day. Be caring, be loving, you know, be able to reach out to someone to make sure they're okay. Um, and, you know, I rely on, you know, I know God's got my back. You know, I'm not stressed about, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world that everyone doesn't see that are very terrible. So mm -hmm. when you look at it from that point of view, you know, your life's, you know, my life's not that bad. I got mm -hmm. an amazing life. I've been blessed beyond imagine. So, you know, I say my prayers every day and I go from there. Oh! <laughs> That's definitely making the cut. <laughs> <laughs> cut sure. The cameraman the throws the dime to the, the case tater. The incoming frosh. Mm. From way outside. Yeah, actually, my my senior, it was our senior night. You know, I where they moved the new college line to. I'd say, what do you think, right here? Yeah. I'd say probably yeah. about right here. Mm -hmm. So I was shooting most threes about there. My senior night, buddy got like went out for a layup, kicked it out. I caught it about. He he poked it out. I caught it about right here. No hesitation, just got that. I made that one, so. Oh, yeah. I kind of walked down the court, looked over at my coach, and he just went. <laughs> you made it, I don't care. That's what Weber would do. But if you if you don't hit it, he going to be screaming, Logan! Logan! What was it? What game was it? Did you see the game where he got, he got intense? You see, you're going over the, going over the raft, going back, going over. The oh raft. yeah, and then you can saw him through his mask. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, shaking. Yeah. So you know, but it's like you see that stuff. It's like yeah. there ain't no coach that's gonna, you know, put that much energy into the game for his guys if he doesn't mm -hmm. care. You know, he cares. He, you can see, Coach yep. Weber cares arguably, you know, more than any other coach I've ever been able to play for. Yep. That's you know, I've had. My, my own opinion, some of the best coaches and best people in my life through basketball that have cared about me and about the game. So, mm -hmm. so I know I saw that one. One of my buddies sent this and said, you're going to have a good time. Just don't piss him off. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thank you. Like, that was from way outside. I miss this, it's not going on. If I make this, it's going on. I'll try it. And then let's talk about, you know, the K-State team coming in. Obviously, it's a little different even from last year. So, K-State obviously is coming off, you know, two seasons where they struggled, you know, mightily. But now, you know, they, they made some additions in the transfer portal, and now it looks like this team could really, you know, put on a nice show, be in the middle of the pack of the Big 12. Oh, yeah. I mean, What do you think about all that? You know, a lot of people have had their own way of saying things to me, you know, this, that, about the other year, last year, the year before. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you guys say what you want. I know what we got coming in. You got to think there was how many freshmen last year? Four, five. Uh, 
you had the three, Nigel, Davion, and um, Selton, who played a lot. Luke came in later because he was injured, so that's four. Siri Lewis, that's five. five. And um, that's the five freshmen that came in, and then there was three newcomers on top of that. And so, yeah, Rudy, Willen, yep, it was okay, a lot. So just, I mean, the things you're seeing there, I mean, you got to think. There's three freshmen playing right now, mm -hmm. and now we're talking, this is the Big 12. This is a very big um, prestigious constant co conference, yep. excuse me, um, that played quite a lot. You give them a couple years, you give them a year even, mm -hmm. a year, sorry, and you give the guys, newcomers, newcomers coming in a year. Now you're talking about a team that's not just competing, but they're winning. You know, now you got guys coming in, a very good recruiting class with my – with Maximus Edwards mm -hmm. and then myself following, um, and then three transfers or yes, three transfers and Marquise, uh, Mark Smith and Ish, all great guys, yep. all very talented basketball players. So everyone can say what they'd like to say, but this K State this year and for the next years to come is going to be very different than the past two years. You know, we're going to start to do what we can and work as hard as we can to be that. Big 12 championship team, not, what was that, three, four, how many years ago was that with Dean? Uh, two years ago. Okay, yeah. sorry, yes, yes, three, okay. three seasons ago. Three seasons mm -hmm. ago, that's what we're going to start to, sh you know, yep. transform into. So, we talked a little bit before we got on. You said Maximus Edwards is someone that you talk to more than, you know, anyone else on the team so far. You're, you know, fellow freshman, incoming freshman. What are the kinds of things you guys talk about and, like, how excited are both you guys coming in? Max is a great guy. I mean, we... We Snapchat a lot, we text, we FaceTime almost every other day. Mm -hmm. um, he's a great guy. You know, I got, when he first committed, you know, we kind of texted a little bit back and forth. And I was like, is this type, is this guy big time in me? Like, what's going <laughs> on here? And then we started talking and he was like, no, like there was so much going on and all this other stuff. And, you know, Max is a great guy. You watch his highlights. Yep. He's the real deal. Mm -hmm. The guy can shoot. The guy can jump out of the gym. He can handle the team, um, and him and I, we talk about all different things from mm -hmm. the college life to our own lives. What are you doing here? What are you doing mm -hmm. there? Um, I'm bigger and stronger than you. No, I'm bigger than <laughs> you. Know, just like teenage guy stuff. So, yeah. you know, he's a really good guy, and, you know, I look forward to creating a very good friendship and on the court and off the court. There's some guys on the team that got bounce, bounce. I don't got that. Well, you got Maximus. Siri's got some bounce I too. Say, I saw some. Siri had some on his story yesterday. <laughs> where he, he was dribble, dribble here, and then just like boom. boom. And I was like, right. <laughs> you run on that side, I'll run on this side. I'll just you throw it. Up. I'll throw it up. You go get it. <laughs> That's um, his. Yeah, man. You, there's some athletes for sure. It's gonna be a fun time. I man, I'm gonna enjoy every second of it. Just working. You're going to a place where it's it's going to be more familiar because, you know, it's a smaller town in Manhattan than, you know, if you're going to, like, some big school with a, a giant city connected to it. But what is different is all the new people that you'll see um, and just the mixtures of cultures and everything else. You're used to the Midwest. We talked about that, you know, fun-loving people all the time, you know, oh, yeah. ready to have conversations. How cool is it, though, now to be able to – a new situation with, a, a, you know, a whole hotbed of different types of people? Oh, it's going to be so much fun. I mean, from what I, you know, all the people I've talked to, I, I got added to this uh, Kansas State group chat a long time ago, and it was like, it's got like a hundred something new kids on it. It's like mm. these freshman kids, and I yeah. just like like to look in the chat, and these are all kids coming to Kansas State, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, we're all 18 year olds, you know, yeah. we're like, holy, you know, like, wow, we're about to be freshmen <laughs> and everything, and you know, there's going to be so many new faces I'm going to see, so many new people I'm going to meet. Um, I think it's going to be so much fun, you know, to be able to walk outside and go out of my camp, you go out of my dorm room and be able to see all these new people and say, hey, how are you? You know, meet these new people, mm -hmm. new teachers. Um, so I, it's going to be very enjoyable. And then, yeah, how big is academics to you? I mean, are you, are you, do you know what degree you're going to go into and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yes. I am going to study business. I'm going to major in business. Um, and then uh, real estate as well. That's going to be my main main gig as of right now you know mm -hmm. everything stuff can change like that so that's what I'm gonna do at the moment academics is something you know 
unless you're a five star who can come in, destroy the, you know, destroy whatever conference you're in and get out of there and be a one and done. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have something to kind of rely on, you know, outside of basketball. Um, so it's something I'm going to take a lot of pride in to go there, get off to a very good academic start and hold that through until I graduate. So how often are we going to see your parents in Manhattan? Oh, geez. I, don't, I mean, my, da my dad, for he's, you know, every single game he'll most likely be at. Um, yeah. He's the one driving me down, driving me to Kansas. So, you know, him and I are extremely close. And uh, mm -hmm. my mom, she'll, she she might be moving to Florida. So I have no, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, she, I, I said to her, I was like, man, if you're moving to Florida, I mean, that's some nice weather. I don't, I, but, <laughs> so, you know, I, I think she's going to be there a lot too. Um, both great relationships with both my parents. So, I think we'll see them there quite a lot. I think they'll enjoy it too. I mean, I don't know if there's anything else we need to add to this, but if there's anything else you want to add, I know the last thing you definitely need to say is, you know, go Cats and tell <laughs> tell everyone, you know, what they can get excited about in Logan Landers coming to K-State's campus. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting to Manhattan, getting settled. I'm looking forward to getting up super early, working my butt off with all the guys on the team. Um, we got an interruption. <laughs> and I'm looking forward um, to winning games. Yeah. You know, not just winning games, but winning games with the guys that I'm going to call family. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kansas State's been where I've wanted to go, and I got the blessed opportunity to go there. So I'll, be, I'll see you guys in three weeks. Go Cats. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you're what, 6'9"? Six, 6'10". Nine? Six, nine, yeah? six, uh-huh. Yeah. So, I mean... You know, like Siri, and he can sit there and jump out of the gym. Right At now. six seven or whatever he is, yeah. six eight. Like, yeah, he said something about that one time. Like, let's go shoot. Let's go shoot. And let me see if I can shoot you. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So I'll, like, be like, guy wants to out dunk me. All right, but I'll come in. I'll shoot you. Yep. Splat. Woo. Ooh. Coming to Manhattan soon. Mmm, mmm.